guys, how are you? I hope you've had a good week and we are in our final uh, week looking at the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis, which is near the beginning of the Bible. Now we've been through a lot of diff the whole story so far. We've got a little bit left at the very end this week that we're going to think about. So in the first week, we thought about how Joseph was Jacob's favourite son. And jo Jacob gave Joseph a very special coat to wear. And it, this made Joseph's brothers jealous. They didn't like that he was Jacob's favourite son. And they were a bit angry with him. So they gave, uh, they threw him into a pit and they sold him to be a slave in Egypt. And then in week two, we thought about how Joseph worked for a man called Potiphar. Now, Potiphar was a very rich man in Egypt and Joseph was his slave. But Joseph still worked really hard for Potiphar and that made Potiphar pleased. But Potiphar's wife was not a very nice lady, was she? And she told some lies and said Joseph did some things. She wanted Joseph to be her boyfriend as well as being married to Potiphar. And Joseph said no because he knew that that was wrong. And so his wife, Potiphar's wife got Joseph thrown into prison. And while Joseph was in prison, he came across the butler and the baker who had the two dreams, one about the uh, bunches of grapes growing on the vine and one about the birds taking the bread from the basket. And you might remember what Joseph said those dreams mean. And at the end of that story, we got to the part where Joseph said to the butler, when you are released and you go back to work for Pharaoh, please remember me and tell Pharaoh about me in prison. But did uh, the butler remember? No, he didn't, did he? And Joseph was in prison for another two years. Can you imagine being in prison for another two years, even though you thought you might get out? That was probably a little bit rubbish. Anyway, week three... Matt and Samuel read the story of Pharaoh's dreams. And Pharaoh had some dreams where there were seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. And the skinny cows ate the fat cows. And Pharaoh didn't understand what that dream meant. And they sent, the butler remembered Joseph, and they sent for Joseph. And Joseph said, I can't tell you what the dreams mean, but with God's help, I can. And because of that, Joseph was able to tell Pharaoh that there were going to be seven years of lots of food, lots lots of good things in the land. And then after that, there were going to be seven years where there wasn't a lot of food, where there was a famine. And they had to save the food, or the extra food, from the seven years of good food to help them through those next seven years. And then last week, in week four... Oh, sorry, because Joseph, J Pharaoh, was so pleased with Joseph, he gave him the special job of storing all the food and collecting all that. And then week four, we learned last week that Joseph's brothers came to Egypt because there was no food in the land of Canaan where they lived. And they came and said, we need some food. Please, can you give us some food? And Joseph looked at these men and he thought, I know these men. They are my brothers. But his brothers didn't realise it was Joseph. And Joseph tested them by doing a few things. I wonder if you can remember what they are. I think he told, he uh, put a cup back in the sack, his special cup. He put their money, he put some extra food. He did this to try and see if these people, his brothers, had changed. And because they said, no, no, we didn't do this, we can't do this, we can't have another brother be taken from us, Joseph realised that they were sorry and we learnt about the word repentance, about when we say sorry and saying sorry to God. And this week we are thinking about Joseph and how Joseph responded to that. So you might want to watch one of the videos below. There's another video on forgiveness as well, which you might want to watch now or you might want to watch later on. So when you're ready, choose a video. Some of them are the same as last week, but it's always good to re watch the another one twice. So three, two, one, off you go. So when Joseph 
um, revealed himself to his brothers. Was he angry with them? Was he like, oh, you're so awful. You're so horrible. You threw me in prison. You threw me, sold me as a slave. You left me to die. Oh, I'm not giving you any food. Did he say that? No. He revealed himself to his brothers and he knew that they were, he had forgiven them. And he assured them they were forgiven. He said, do not be angry with yourselves. Because Joseph knew that through all of this, through his dreams when he was a small boy and being thrown in a pit and sold to Potiphar and put into prison and interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, that was God's plan all along. He knew that God had a plan in in mind. And Joseph understood that everything had happened to him, the good and the bad, was all part of that bigger plan. But Joseph knew also knew that he had to forgive his brothers for what they had done. And he said to his brothers, don't quarrel on the way. Don't quarrel about all this stuff that you've done. Because he had forgiven them. And he said, it's me, it's Joseph, I'm your brother. And forgiveness means forgetting what's happened in the past, forgetting the past sin and making a fresh start. No more regret or anger or accusation. Forgiveness means you give up the right to hear someone say that they are sorry. And that's a really important thing to remember. And even as adults, that's a really tricky thing to remember. It's a tricky thing for me sometimes. But for, when you forgive somebody, it doesn't make what they've done, doesn't make it right because they've done something unkind or horrible that's hurt you. But it means you give up the right to hear somebody say they're sorry. You, it means you don't expect them to say, I'm sorry, because you've forgiven them, okay? So... If you've forgiven, so if your friend or somebody has hurt you or been unkind to you at school, if you forgive them, you don't say, oh, I'm not going to be friends with you until you say I'm sorry. You just say, it's okay, I forgive you, and you move on. And that is what it means uh, to be a Christian, and that's what forgiveness means when we believe in Jesus. As Christians, we believe, I believe, that Jesus died on the cross to forgive all of those sins all of those bad things that we have done and taken them away because if God didn't forgive us if Jesus didn't do that we couldn't come to God and we couldn't say and be friends with God so we have to go to God and we have to say we're sorry but God forgives us anyway even if we didn't say we were sorry God would still forgive us But when Jesus died on the cross at Easter, he took all of those bad things for us. He took the place of them when he died on the cross. And we're going to talk more about that in the next couple of weeks. But that is the best news. That is the greatest news that we can remember. And that's what I want you to remember from this week. I want you to remember that all those bad things you have done, all the bad things that Joseph's brothers did, God forgives them. Why? Because he loves us. He loves me. God loves you. He loves your mums. He loves your dads. He loves your teachers. He loves your friends. He loves everybody. God is that good. God forgives all of us, regardless of what we have done. If we come to God and say, we are sorry for those bad things, then he forgives us. So I would like to pray, guys, and I would like to maybe like you to think of something that you need to say sorry to God for. It could be something you've done or some way you've acted. It could be something you've said. It could even be something you've thought. Sometimes when you think things that aren't right, we all think things that aren't right. And we have to say sorry to God. So we're going to pray and we're going to say sorry to God and ask for his forgiveness. And I know that he will forgive you. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the story of Joseph. Thank you that through his story, we learn that you use all things for your good. All these things are for your good. In the Bible, in Genesis 50, Joseph says to his brothers, you meant to harm me, but God meant it for good. And help us to remember that, that all the things that happen, you are doing good in it. And Father, we want to say this week, we want to say sorry for something that we have done that is not the right thing, that is a bad thing, that is a sin. And we want to ask that you forgive us, that you give up that right to hear us say we're sorry. But you want to hear us say that we're sorry, and it's good to say sorry. 
And Father, help us to forgive others as well. Help us to show your love and your forgiveness to those around us, to our friends and to our family and other people that we meet. And thank you for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross to forgive all of those bad things that we have done. And thank you for Easter. Thank you for that and that we're going to learn more about that in the next few weeks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now we've got some exciting things coming up in the next few weeks. We've got a couple of Easter. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at the story of Easter in our Sunday videos. We, this afternoon, we have got, which is Sunday afternoon, we have got a Zoom and we're going to be watching Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat together on Zoom. And we'd love you to join that, us for that. And then next Sunday at four o'clock, we have Family Connect. And you can collect your Easter packs from the church from Thursday. I hope you will have a really great week and I hope to see some of you very soon. Bye bye.